call from the presiding bishop's office out of the blue. I was completely surprised by the opportunity. But it's this kind of opportunity, this kind of way of thinking is something that, that, uh, that I've been talking about. So I was intrigued by the, the notion that this might be possible. The standing committee in the Diocese of Bethlehem know their people, and they know their own diocese. They've clearly built relationships over the course of years, and they're now using the capital that they've built through these relationships to make some very important decisions. It's, it's good for an organization, a diocese, to be able to say, this is what we need. We need space for prayer and discernment. And not only are we going to create the space, we're going to do it in a different way. We're going to engage this in a way that is not uh, being done widely across the church. We're willing to take a risk. But the risk is for the sake of discernment about the future. And this is a group of people that are clearly committed to the well-being, to the to the spiritual vitality and to the growth of their diocese. I think my role is going to be to walk alongside of the people of Bethlehem, the standing committee, the council, the lay leaders, and the clergy of the diocese, and to help to give voice to a vision that they're beginning to articulate, and to help to make what their dream, what their vision, and what we will discern together a reality both for the Diocese of Bethlehem and for the Episcopal Church. At the core of the way that I, I approach the office is out of a, of a deep and centered relationship with God and a collaborative way of working that it would be unlikely, and I think I can say with confidence that during my Episcopate I've never lone rangered anything. And it's important for people to know that I'm highly collaborative. And that works for some and for those who, who like to um, have it laid out for them and, and be told the way that it should be, that might be disappointing. The key priorities are to get to know the people of the Diocese of Bethlehem. That's, that's number one when uh, I arrive in Bethlehem. It's important to know the people because people the leaders, the lay leadership and the clergy know their contexts better than any diocesan bishop or diocesan staff could know their contexts. So I, I want to know about that and to find ways to make the diocesan structure responsive, continually more responsive to the needs of the people of the diocese. So I spent a lot of time with clergy on retreat and spend a significant amount of my time meeting with clergy just to talk about the issues that they face. Because after all, we know that the clergy and the lay leadership on the ground are the ones that really know their congregations, know their mission fields, and they're really doing the hard work. So I see part of my role is supporting that work. Well, I can't say whether Lauren is excited about <laughs> our one and a half year old. She seems to be, I think she'll just be happy to be wherever we are. But Carly certainly is looking forward to the opportunity She's a, a Christian educator, a, a lay professional in the church, so she brings a lot of expertise, and um, it's hard to say maybe she might be the better part of this deal. I would say core to helping me to, to stay centered is, is a prayer life and uh, a, a daily life of, of prayer, both individually and in community. I also have uh, had a spiritual director for a number of years and am involved in, in groups where we're able to hold each other accountable spiritually. And those, that's important. I spent the last several years studying organizations and organizational leadership and thinking about ways of structuring to meet the, the needs both internally to an organization and externally. And so these studies will, will come to bear as we think about how church can, can carry out its mission in the world given the context of the 21st century. I think I've, really what I have is the ability to bring practical knowledge from the organizational field and see how it applies to the church. And this endeavor is just one way of doing that.
The fact of the matter is that now we're looking at new models of ministry. And when we're experimenting and we're trying new models, we're going to fail a number of times before we can succeed. We don't know what works. The Diocese of Northwestern Pennsylvania is in a primarily depopulating region, and we're trying new models. Some of them work, some of them haven't. But what, in the end and at the bottom of all of this is God and God's grace and God's love for us. It's for us to do what we can, to be experimental and innovative, to think big, to dream big, and to expect that God will honor us in our efforts.